I know that the clock is ticking down for every second and you're sitting out there and just waiting for that last review that can help you decide which Time More sculpture to back. Well, you're lucky because this is a bit of a different review and I'm going to try to help you choose between these two grinders here or choose between some of the other options that are available. So the way we're going to do this today is first I'm going to talk about the user experience, the differences between the big 078 and the small 064S. Then we're going to talk about the taste, we're going to grind some coffee, and then I'm going to answer some frequently asked questions that people on Instagram and YouTube have uh, given me before this video. So just to give you a general summary, if you haven't read my review of the 064S, I think the overall user experience is uh, really good with this grinder, actually almost best in class. And uh, I will say in many ways, the same thing can be said about uh, this one here. Obviously, 078 is a lot bigger, so it's worth taking into consideration how your coffee station or your work space in your kitchen is. Uh, personally, I would say in uh, my coffee corner in the kitchen, it does look a little bit out of the place. This white color just steals a lot of attention, whereas this matte black is uh, a lot more discreet and obviously it's a lot smaller as well. A noticeable difference is in the catch cups here. The catch cup on the big version is just a lot more heavy and sturdy, whereas it's a little bit more flimsy on the 064. I wouldn't say it's bad in any way. Actually, it's good in the sense that the magnet will just pull it in a lot more firmly, like so, uh, whereas this one has to be guided a lot more into place. You can also see how forceful the magnet is here, because even though you do this, uh, the catch cup will stay in place. If you do the same with 078, the catch cup will slide down eventually. I think we also have to take into account what the competitors are offering. And uh, this is the catch cup from the DF64, which is uh, significantly cheaper, feeling lighter and more ugly. Well, it does fit on a 58 millimeter porter filter, but that's kind of the only advantage. The next noticeable difference is the hoppers. Personally, I think it looks uh, a lot better on the small version. It looks a bit more uh, sculpted, you could say. Uh, whereas this one here looks slapped on. Uh, the plastic is actually a really uh, solid, nice material. It actually feels a little bit the same as the Timo B75. Uh, but if you know that dripper, you also know how it can kind of catch the light and reflect it in a way that I would call kind of bling bling. So that's not exactly my style. You might be into it, but uh, personally I prefer the more uh, matte, subdued look here. On the other hand, inside the hopper, it does feel like uh, beans are a little bit more prone to sticking here on the back side of the anti-popcorning disc. Uh, here, I think it's uh, less likely for the beans to get stuck on the back side. But both have a little bit of that same problem that also uh, plagued uh, the fellow old where it's not always that all beans will slide down in and then they can kind of popcorn out again or parts of the beans that have already been cut can pop out again. So it's worth making sure that uh, you get everything down here. So uh, actually this grinder has super low retention and I found usually when I was missing some parts of my dose, it was because there would be like half a bean uh, hidden somewhere in the nooks and crannies of the hopper. So if you make sure to push that out, then in daily use, you're going to have very low retention. The hoppers on both are on the slightly smaller side. So if you're brewing more than 30, 40, 50 grams, it's starting to be a little bit annoying and you will kind of have to pour the beans in while the motor is running and that will give you some extra space. You can kind of like slide them in at the same time. But yeah, they are really single dose hoppers in the term single dose, not double dose. Speaking of cosmetic differences, Again, the lid is uh, slightly different. It locks into place a little bit nicer on the 078, whereas it doesn't always sit flush on the 064, but both have magnets that help to keep the lid in place. So in daily use, it's not a huge deal breaker or anything like that. I've seen people compare them to some weird house appliances uh, online, uh, a sewing machine, uh, and Time More themselves even compare this one here to the James Bond gun. 
I think you can compare it to some kind of gun, but maybe not James Bond's. When we are talking about single dosing, I think the most important things are retention and is it easy to switch between different grind settings. And it definitely is with both of these grinders. At the same time, both these grinders are really quiet. They can compete with uh, some of the best grinders in this regard. So when it comes to all these features that just makes life a little bit more enjoyable, they really excel. I'm not sure I actually need the extra power in this grinder. Uh, I've been using this quite extensively for espresso. I pulled 10 shots in a row. I seasoned it with uh, light roasted beans. I even ground a little bit of uh, green beans just to see what it was capable of. I wouldn't recommend that you do this at home, but uh, so far I haven't really seen any reason to uh, suspect that it won't be able to handle daily use. On the other hand, if you need a grinder for commercial use, yeah, then I can understand why you would offer something a little bit more powerful. But now I'll just grind some coffee so you can see how they actually work. And then we'll talk a bit more about flavor and some things that I think could be potential concerns. I'm just going to load in 20 grams of coffee. Let's see how much we get out. No RDG. And go. And we got 19.9 grams out. I was running it at 1000 RPM, which is kind of the in-between setting. So not super fast, not super slow. And the setting is a little bit finer than six. You can actually go between the steps here, uh, which I found to be a pretty good setting for some kind of fine pour over coffee. It is very uniform actually. And now let's grind a dose of espresso. Okay, I got 15.5 grams. It might look a little bit out of place with a white cord, uh, but this is just to make my life a little bit easier. Load in the beans. And 15.2 grams, maybe something is stuck, let's see. Okay, I think there might be a little bit stuck here. I'm just going to clean it out and then run the last bit. Yeah, there was still a little bit of a chip in there. Okay. and 15.4. So it just needed a little bit of help. I think sometimes there can also be some small chips stuck in there that uh, it can be a little bit difficult to grind, but this is pretty common for most coffee grinders. So nothing unusual here. And I should say I'm at setting two and the RPM is the max speed, which is 1200. And let's take a look at the grounds. Nice, fluffy. I'm not going to brew any coffee now because I know you're sitting out there. The countdown is going fast and as uh, soon as the deadline, you gotta make a decision. So I'll just talk about my experience over the last uh, days where I've had these grinders and how the taste has been. So let's start out with the 064 S. Uh, the espresso is uh, good. It's not a game changer by any means, but it's just good solid espresso. I wouldn't call it modern espresso or old fashioned espresso. It's somewhere in between. It has a strong, nice body. The shots are pretty sweet. 
but there can also be a touch of astringency sneaking in sometimes when you use more medium roasted coffee. I've compared it to a coffee shop grinder and it actually held itself quite well against uh, the Enfim Scotty 2. Uh, of course, it's not as good. That one is a 75 millimeter burr, uh, which just represents that whole sound stage a little bit better, has more acidity and a kind of nicer texture to the body. But I think for most people, most users at home, I don't think they would feel like they're missing out. I did also run a test against the Eureka Mignon Specialita, just to compare it to something that a lot of people are familiar with. And personally, I preferred the Specialita. It was just a little bit more round and didn't quite have that same astringency that could sometimes sneak in with the shots here. Uh, but overall, it's a quite small difference. The good news, if you're considering this grinder for a multi-purpose, is that it's also uh, quite solid for filter brewing. So I will say it's definitely better for this than most other espresso grinders uh, you can find out there. I compared it in depth to the Easypresso K-Max, and it's not quite as interesting as that grinder. It struggles a little bit when it comes to representing aftertaste and acidity, but I think it will be quite solid for everything except the most light roasted coffees. If you are more uh, dedicated light roast lover, then probably a premium conical hand grinder will still do a better job. But it's uh, punching above its weight. I will certainly say it's better than uh, most of these electrical conical grinders such as uh, Barazza and Call, even with the M2 burr and uh, also Time Wars own C2 hand grinder. So it's kind of in the middle of the pack, both when it comes to espresso and filter coffee, which I think uh, should be considered quite good when you also factor in the overall workflow, how nice it is and the affordable price. I know for a lot of people out there, the possibility to upgrade with third party burrs, for example, the famous one from SSP, has been a big part of the appeal of the 064 series. So I also assumed before getting into this review that it would be quite straightforward to install the SSP multi-purpose burst, for instance. Uh, I've even seen other creators on YouTube do it. Uh, there's a video from our coffee shelter. I'll put a link down below where it looks quite simple. Uh, but I have to say, when I wanted to do it on this grinder, it uh, didn't go that well. It's actually easy enough to disassemble the grinder, but I feel like the tolerances in there are actually too tight to get the multi-purpose burr to fit. So there could be several reasons I ran into this problem. It could be that uh, the different Time War models from the factory uh, just have different badges and different sizes, or it could be that the multi-purpose burrs are different. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, and it could also just be that I'm not skillful enough to install new burrs on uh, this grinder here. But I have done it on several grinders in the past, so my guess would be that the multi-purpose burrs, uh, the ones I have, are just a little bit too small. So when you hold them together, it seems like they are exactly the same size, but it's very easy to slide in Time Wars own stock burrs, whereas I just I tried it for maybe 20 minutes, but I couldn't get the multi-purpose burr to fit. And this is a little bit of a concern because Time Wars official stance is that they don't support you switching burrs. And also SSP haven't made any burrs specifically for Time Wars. So until one of these parties can come out and say, we got a set of aftermarket burrs that uh, you can fit with confidence, I'm not 100% sure I can say to you that you should just go out and uh, buy this grinder uh, because you can put the other burrs inside it. Because it would be a little bit of a shame to buy this one and then not being able to upgrade it to new burrs in the future if uh, that's what you want. I'm not saying that you wouldn't have a good life with the, the stock burrs. They are certainly capable and I think many people would be happy with them. But just having that ability to spend, let's say, 150, 200 US dollars and then take your grinder from good to elite level, that's a really nice option to have. Now let's focus on the Zero 78. So when I got the grinder, I actually had really high expectations because I had already seen some reviews uh, saying how good this is for filter coffee. 
and I would say my first cups were also quite enjoyable, but then I started to notice something in the cup that I was not quite sure how to put. And then I thought more about it, and then I realized it actually reminded me a little bit of a grinder I reviewed on this channel before, which is called the CO Leo. So that grinder uses a special set of burrs, which are known as ghost burrs. These ghost burrs type of cups, they can be a little bit polarizing, or at least I think they should be polarizing, because the way uh, they represent acidity is quite different from how all other grinders do it. I think conical and flat burrs have a lot more in common, and then ghost burrs, they do things a little bit their own way. So it's kind of strange to say it, but I think this really appeals to somebody who only drinks super, super light roast, or somebody who doesn't want acidity in their coffee. So the way the 078 represents acidity is quite unusual. And uh, if you're brewing like, let's say, uh, 84, 85 point uh, washed mild coffee, uh, something with some hazelnut, some chocolate, sugar cane, those kind of more normal quote unquote flavor notes, uh, I think it doesn't do those that well. But on the other hand, if you have some natural and aerobic stuff uh, that's roasted really light, then it can really pull out those qualities and present them in a very nice way. Overall, I did do some uh, taste comparisons. I both put it up against the SSP multi-purpose and the SSP cast, both the 64 millimeter version. And on both instances, it was kind of hard to tell the difference when the cups were hot, but as they cooled down, it just got obvious to me that mellow aftertaste is not personally what I'm 100% for. I think it takes something that's very essential to uh, coffee, how I usually perceive it, and then it kind of removes it. If you take something like the SSP multipurpose, I think it's pretty well established that it can make fantastic cups sometimes, while some coffees are quite so-so. And it's a little bit like it's got its own signature flavor that it will impart to different coffees. And the highs can be very high, but the lows are also quite low. I will say that the 078 does the same thing. It just takes the coffees in a different direction where SSP multipurpose can be quite acidity driven. Uh, this grinder really mutes acidity and represents the coffee in a bit more. Uh, it's very hard to describe, uh, but especially as the coffee's cooled down, I think it's uh, apparent that you lack that kind of uh, grittiness in the cup, that kind of, when you bite into an apple, then you'll have some bitterness from the skin, you'll have some uh, citric acidity, but it feels a bit more like you're just getting a stewed apple with the 078. So I actually think that the, the 078 and the multipurpose represent each an extreme. And then in the middle, you will have the cast burrs uh, from SSPs. And those will be a lot more what I would consider a baseline taste. Uh, sure, it will be a good one, uh, but it will just be a lot more similar. It will enable me to imagine how the same coffee will taste with other grinders. Whereas this one here, and the multi-purpose, they do their own thing. I do think the 078 is a good grinder to get. If you already know coffee very well, you have other grinders to compare it to, you mainly drink light roast, like really light roast, let's say something like Nomad, uh, Tim Venelbo, Coffee Collective, these guys. If you're more new and you're still confused about coffee and what your preferences are, then I wouldn't go out and say you have to get the 078. I was actually quite surprised as I started doing my testing that I was feeling this way. But luckily I know another barista who's had this grinder for a while and I asked him about his opinion and he personally would also take the EK or the Commandante, some more traditional grinders that are also really good at what they're doing over the 078. So I don't think it's a universal feeling that uh, this grinder will just go in and uh, change the game for everybody. So I think you could probably find a similar example in many different hobbies, be it uh, musical equipment, guitars, cars, everything. There will be some things that are kind of extreme in their own direction. It could be an SUV and a sports car uh, as two extremes, or it could be speakers that are very 
bass heavy, very treble focused. And I get a little bit the same feeling with the Zero 78. It's not quite a balanced middle of the road grinder. It's more something that is quite unique and doing one thing very well, but might not be the most well-rounded option or the best option for newbies. Well, if you have the fellow Opus, then I can kind of deduce that you got it just a couple of months ago. So that would mean you're still quite new in coffee, you're quite new to this grinder. And I would say you should probably spend a lot more time with it, a lot more time with different brewing methods and beans, and finding out what it is you want more from your coffee, try different techniques. And then at that point, it makes more sense to upgrade. So if you don't know how to get the best out of the Opus yet, I don't think the 078 is the answer to your problems. So probably in terms of quality, it's a big step up, but in terms of the style of the coffee, I think with 078 you're getting into a new territory and uh, the 48 millimeter obsidian burrs, they will probably represent a little bit more of a middle ground in terms of what coffee is and what coffee can be. Uh, so yeah, I hope that makes sense. No, I don't necessarily think so. The old Gen 2, they have fixed the static issues. You have some good burrs. If you want to upgrade, it would be cheaper to buy a set of uh, SSP burrs than uh, getting any of these. So I don't necessarily think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think the steps are plenty for dialing in all kinds of manual brewing methods. And you can even go between the steps. So it seems like you just have these steps to give you a little bit of a, a tactile experience. So it's not like the fellow old, where you're more locked between the steps. Here you can actually use uh, settings in between, which I don't really think you need, but yeah, that's an option. Well, for this review, I tested it against the Specialita, and it wasn't an upgrade uh, compared to that one. So I doubt it will be a big upgrade over the Silencio for taste. For workflow, yes. Well, the motor definitely feels capable enough, but the main problem is just that I couldn't get the bird to fit. Uh, others have done it, so it might just be my technical skills or it could be a problem with uh, this grinder or the SSP multi-purpose burst I have. I remember there was also a problem with the fellow oats. At one point, there were some batches where you couldn't fit the SSP burst inside them. And I think actually fellow was not happy with that. So they replaced the grinders and helped people get a good experience with this. But it's not my feeling that uh, time more intends to do that. So I think it's probably a good idea to wait a little bit longer, find out what the uh, Hansung from SSP's official stance is to this. Are they going to support the 64 millimeter platform uh, with this grinder here? Well, since this is not an espresso grinder and it can't grind fine enough to generate any pressure, I will have to give it to DF83 or any espresso grinder for that matter. I think it's quite high in clarity and also quite high in sweetness, but uh, the other components of the cup, for example, acidity and body, I think it's uh, quite different from other grinders out there. So in some aspects, it's really good and in others, it is uh, really lacking. Okay, I think we have to stop it here if I'm going to have time to edit and upload a video before the Kickstarter ends. But uh, I also have a feeling that this is probably not the last time I've had the Time War Sculptors in a video. So uh, if you're interested in uh, comparison with other hot new grinders coming out, uh, let me know down below and uh, then I'll see what we can do. And I guess I just have to say thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.